This is a little awkward. We have a boat on a land map on Monkey Meadow. There is no water on this map and there is a boat. That is because the brand new fifth tier top path Lord of the Abyss allows you to place water towers wherever you want to as long as he's placed down. Now you may have seen this, you may have not, but I just wanted to run through chimps and see what it was like and then take on a harder map as well. But another thing that makes this insane is that the boat pull down can now pull down both fortified ZOMGs with no trouble because now we can pull down up to six Moab class balloons, but I believe it takes three for a ZOMG, which is cool because before we would have to use two different rotations of his ability to even get those ZOMGs. Now it just takes one. So this tower is an absolute powerhouse. It always has been. And now you can place it on any map that you want to. It was limited to only water maps or maps with water. Now that is no longer a thing. So you can easily just shred through all of this. I just pulled down six fortified DDTs. And can I take this one down? Oh my goodness. That was a little close there. I don't know if we could actually take down a bad, but before we get too far in, don't forget that if you need anything from the Ninja Kiwi store at all, do not forget to go over to settings and use creator support code to bloom because it helps out the channel at no extra cost to you. But as you can see, we have $81,000. I was just trying to go as cheap as possible because I love Monkey Meadow. You don't need to plaster the screen with a bunch of towers in the beginning get by with Sada. And then I went straight for this guy right here. And then I got an alchemist and it carried all the way until he was a fifth tier. It was awesome. But of course, if we're a little unsure of ourselves, we can just throw down an Moab Eliminator here and just take it down really quickly. And then whatever pops open, we can just go whoop, get out of here, buddy, and then take that one down with ability and then use my other ability and hope that it works. And it does. We just took down chimps with 46,000. Well, that's not that much, actually, but we did it. But Monkey Meadow or any beginner map or intermediate for that matter would be pretty easy with this. So I'm going to try it on something that I struggle with sometimes. That is underground. It's just hard to find strategies because it's two different tracks. And right when you think you have it together, it'll just plop out over there. So I'm thinking boat right in the middle. Abyss dude do his side and then you can tear up everything. Now I've tried to start with Sada here and it's just, I just can't make it work because it has to be like pixel perfect with Sada on these like harder maps where it doesn't spin around as much. And there you go. I messed that one up, but it looks like the left side's a little better. I don't know, but I don't think we are going to be able to get to another tower. Now with this, it's not Monkey Meadow. So you are going to have to start with different towers and then place different towers until you get to the top path Abyss. You can't just run two towers deep to get to where you need to be. But the boat's always been one of my favorite towers in the game. Just the regular basic boat. I just love how he looks. He looks awesome. And then a few updates back, they made the Pirate Lord just unbelievably strong. Like just ridiculously strong. And now they've made him even stronger, I think, with that pull down and the fact that now I can place him on maps that I struggled with before. Like with this one, I would normally go with, let's say, like attack over here on this side and try to build it up. Or maybe a Spectre, but then the Spectre kind of whiffs later on in the game. So the fact that I can place a boat that attacks out of both sides of his little cannons, left and right, is pretty awesome. Now, can I go straight for Sada here? Do I need to grab like a sniper? Okay, we're good to go. That's actually pretty awesome. Now, the thing I've been finding a little bit tough is that you got to go straight for the fifth tier first, and it's not great against Moabs. It does slow them down, I think, better than a glue gunner but it's not good for attacking them. Now, I did have some luck on Monkey Meadow with just an Alchemist, but I don't think that's going to work for here. So we do have to do a couple of things. Well, because yes, we could just place down pretty much anything we want and pop that Moab. But the problem is, is will we have enough money to get the Abyss by the time that it matters? Or are we going to constantly be chasing? That's always a tough spot with chimps. When to save, when to spend. But I think if I place him right next to Sada and then the boat right next to him on his left, I think we'll be in a really good spot. Now I've just been going with camo for the cross path because it helps to have it earlier on because Sada can't handle 37 on her own. But then I'm wondering like, is it better to go middle path? I haven't fully tested out these cross paths, but I don't think it matters too much at this point for what we're trying to do here. But I do need to see this isn't gonna work. No, we're gonna miss one right there. So I think a good little sniper will still be awesome if we can place it just like right there would be a good one. We might have to use that too, just to get past the first Moab. These clown hats are super distracting. I usually turn off all of the trophy store items just because they distract the heck out of me. And this definitely is no different. <laughs> They're just everywhere. So I can't really tell what balloon I'm actually fighting because the hat is all of the colors, which is a little tough. And then the yellow ones just look giant for some reason, like huge when they're coming out of that screen or it was a glitch. I, saw, I swear they were just like the size of the screen coming out of there. But I like the bottom path anyway, just because the range isn't that great on land. So this helps out a lot. Now, I don't even know if it's that beneficial to use this guy on land, but this strategy works out really well. It's just the fact that I would like to use my boat. Now, I wish, I wish, I wish you can't have it all, you know, but I 
wish that the fourth tier allowed me to place at least like one tower down because then I could get the bow earlier and then get the abyss and then it would be like capped by a fifth tier so you can only do fourth tier that would be really weird and there'd be no point for it when you can just go for the fifth tier but my point is like the top path fifth tier isn't the best so I'd prefer to get my boat first and then go for that one now another choice I was making like what should I do? Should I go top path boat or middle path boat? Because top path boat allows me to place other things there on top of it. So for maps that you just can't see necessarily like on, um, oh, can I get this one? Oh, I missed that one up. So maps that you just can't see quite right. Like for instance, what are you doing here, Sada? Put your stuff where they need to go. All right, we're going to out buff you anyway. So let's just do that now. For a map like sunken columns where when you place the boat into it, it can't see the track. It'd be perfect for that because now he's raised up and now you can attack and then put stuff on top of it with the boat or something like cornfield. You can place towers on top of towers if you use the boat, the top path. So it's just kind of cool. But I, I don't know. Will this work? I think this will work. We have our camo covered. We just don't have camo lead covered. But Sada, I think, can solo because I could just use her ability with good timing on 37 to take down that last round of camos. And then I think she can handle all the way up to like 49 or 50 or something like that. So technically, we don't need too much camo. Now, the question is, is what do we do for that Moab? If I can get by the same way I did on Monkey Meadow, we are set. You can use this for so many maps and it'll be so awesome. Now, I started this off with Monkey Meadow to show you that you can use it on pretty much all of the beginner maps. So if you're looking to, for a fun, easy chimp strategy with a new tower, hopefully you unlock your user ability on Sada. What are you doing? All right, Sada, you got to stop messing with that stuff. Let's get our perishing potions here to make it a little better. The kinks are not completely worked out of this strategy. You just need to use it because it's really fun. And then I'm hoping that if everyone uses this kind of thing, we can come up with some really, really cool stuff for it and just make it completely awesome. I keep doing this though. I need a better, why is the alchemist not working? Seriously though, seriously, his, his acidic initiative is that bad. Okay, now we're good. So the Abyssal Warrior is really good as far. Oh my gosh, are these leads going to stress me out again? I'm done with these leads. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Let's take out this Moab. Let's just, I'm done talking until we take out this Moab. I want to see what happens here. I chose this map because there was no water to entice me. There was none. We have to do it this way. And I thought that'd be pretty fun. And then it's a circle tower. So I thought it would do better here. Now, I don't know, like, should I use my ability first? Should we chop it down? Yeah, look how much that's, that's really slow. I like that a lot. And then if I open it, oh, I don't even need a Sada. Okay. Okay. I thought we were gonna have to worry about mobs. Definitely not. Now we are getting a little overwhelmed. It looks like like things are starting to stack up here and scaring me. So I'm wondering what else we could use because we're not going to make it to 31,320. I don't know if it's worth it to get stronger stimulus. That's $3,000 here. A sniper just adds up way too much cost too quickly. I'm thinking even just a bottom path symphonic resonance. But again, I don't want to spend that much money. I want to keep it cheap until we get to the top path because we do have to spend a lot of money on a boat. I like that it just completely yeets the ceramics though. Even if they're fortified, they just disappear, which is really cool. It's kind of like top path flame where it just disappears all of a sudden. You don't even know what the heck happened, but it works and I like it, but we're about halfway. Not, not quite, not quite. What is your favorite fifth tier of the new Mermonkey yet? I think the middle path's my favorite, but I think the best is the bottom path. I was messing around with it with the boomerang. And literally it just sits there and spins the balloons around and the Moabs around forever and ever and ever. And then the top path boomerang just completely deletes everything while it's doing it. Use it with a slowdown, like a bottom path glue or a bottom path ice. And next thing you know, you have this endless like craziness. So what I was thinking is what if, oh, no, 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 no. what if you put like 75 of those things down, like the bottom paths and just have like a total spin rooney of all of these. And then you'll never have to worry. And then the boomerang can do all the work. I think it is time for stronger stimulant though, just to be safe. Um, maybe, I don't know. Now we're still halfway to, oh, geez, that didn't work either. <laughs> we're working out the kinks together, guys. We are a hundred percent going to need a village for the boat later on. So maybe we can just get that now and just do this one. Since they don't need the camo, we can use that one. And then I think the boat should be able to fit here right there with it. Yeah, perfect. I like it. Is that enough though? It should be. That costs more than just buying the alchemist. I guess that makes more sense because you have to buy it for a thousand and spend like 1600 on that 400 on the upgrade. That's a lot of money, but I just think round 50 is going to be tough because we like slowly, but surely took out this thing by itself. We didn't have anything else to fight. And there we go. That's what I was worried about. So maybe a bigger alch. No, no, maybe a bigger alchemist. I guess that's all we can do. I, don't, I just don't think this is an alchemist or a Moab popper. It's I, what am I to say though, right? That worked really well. That worked really well. I just want to get there. This is what I'm talking about. We keep chasing. 
We keep chasing. On Monkey Meadow, I literally just put down Sada. I put down this guy, got him up to a 402, got an Alchemist, waited till 31,000. Next thing I know, I had it, and then I bought a boat. It was that simple. But that is Monkey Meadow. This is an advanced map, which should mean I'm an advanced player. We should be able to figure this out. But we're figuring it out together here for the first time. And I think the only round we might have to worry about is 57, but I do have Sada's ability. And since we're on an advanced map, she should level up a little bit quicker. So maybe we'll have it by then. No, 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 we won't have her second ability. We'll have it by 59, because we're definitely gonna need it for that. Because you know the alchemist won't let us pop all that stuff. I would like to try it though. I maybe could have put the village up here and then alchemist would have been there for 59 for sure. But I don't really care because we have Sada. Some of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about because 59 has that huge old camo rush and that always wrecks me. Here's the round I was worried about. If we, oh, we took out the first one. Oh, and the second one, okay. All right, that's fine. All we needed was an alchemist on the Ursula octopus and we're done. Okay, I love it. I thought this more of a support tower, but it, I mean, it does its fair duty. We got 25,000 pops on him and then 27 on Sada. So Sada still is the heavy carrier. But again, this is not a fifth tier. Things will start ramping up for sure. Okay, come on, pop it one more time. There we go. Now here's the 59 I was worried about. Can the alchemist do his job? Okay, there we go. Oh, and no, we don't have Sada level 10 by 59 because we didn't get her in the first round. We used to, we're always used to getting her round one or round six. And we did not this time because we had to place all this stuff down first. Now, I like the damage that it does to Moabs, but I feel like it should somewhat disappear them. I mean, it has an abyss there. Maybe the abyss isn't big enough, but we'll see about 63. Like, it should handle at 63. I haven't bought anything because I want to make sure that it does. Like, this is a fifth tier tower. Yes, it's cheap, but for 31,000, oh, come on right now. Because if you buy this one for 31,000, it can carry to the 80s. No problem. So that's a little bumming. So I guess what we'll do is we'll drop it here because we can put a boat on the ground now, which it makes no sense, but I love it. Let's roll with it. And then we're going to get it all the way up to the middle one. And that won't be enough for 63, but we could try it. Maybe for the first one, if we can do it, we'll s actually, okay. Sec first rush is good. So if we can second rush with an ability or maybe the cannon ship's just awesome like that. Oh my God. Is it really that good? It's because it has the abyss under it now. Now, the reason I like the middle path boat is because it shoots out both sides. I think that is tremendous for a map like this. It might as well be like a tack shooter. And so it can hit a lot and it has this huge range. So it's just a great tower. Again, I think top path would be awesome too. But then at that point, why don't you just get a specter? What's the point of using the boat? I like the fact that the boat can just kind of spread out, but so can the top path, I guess, because it does have the destroyer built into it. It's just not as strong as this guy. But hey, I could be wrong. You guys let me know below. Would you rather do this strategy with a middle path or a top path? You could technically do both because we should have a good chunk of money to work with here at the end. I would imagine we'll have a lot of money to work with. So 78 is not going to work or is it? Uh, one balloon, two balloons. Okay, we're, we'll use Sada's second ability. I thought that was kind of funny. I wasn't sure it's was gonna work, but this tower is no slouch. I mean, obviously he's not as good as this fifth tier, but he has been holding down the fort and we're only, actually we should get it after this rush, right? Did I mention that I could pull things down with it? Like how cool of a tower is the boat? I love it, it looks great. Pirate skin for the win for sure. And then, oh, I could have gotten it anyway. Okay, that's cool. Now I also forgot that this actually gives you more stuff, greatly enhancing the pierce of nearby monkeys. So not only is he a powerhouse on his own, but now his pierce is crazier, which is just awesome. Now the thing that I see destroying us, like absolutely destroying us, is gonna be DDTs, it's always DDTs. But watch this, watch this, let's pull everything down. All six of them at once, I don't care. So what would be kind of cool then is like, if I could save up for it, get the Energizer and just constantly keep redoing it, that'd be 12, 12 of these. That would be in complete insanity. So, but for this, like, why would you even bother? You can pull it down easily. <laughs> I'm not one for abilities. I'm kind of lazy with it, but it's just fun. It's just like rounds that kind of seem difficult. Sometimes the boat just pulls it down, which is really cool. I'm acting like the boat's the new tower, but it's just really awesome that I could use it on this map. I get like some kind of childlike enjoyment out of it. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just got a bike for Christmas. Like put the boat on land. But then you just pull everything down. The six of them is insane. I love that. I love that you can pull six now. Oh, was round 85 worrying you? Not anymore. You pulled them both down in one pull. Now, normally he could do that anyway, if it's a longer map like this one, I don't, this isn't a generally like really long map, but you would wait for it to regenerate and then pull. But now you don't have to because he can pull two at a time. I just think it's a little weird that, so technically he shoots six, but it takes three for his OMG. So I'm going to do two of them and then I have to take on the others naturally. So is it BFBs? Would that be, I can pull three BFBs because they're worth two pulls. 
I didn't see that in the notes. I'm just kind of guessing here. We can test it though. Let's see if it pulls all four. Yeah, it pulls all four. So that doesn't matter. Well, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be. That'd be the same. No, it wouldn't. Cause I'd only be able to pull two. Oh, I don't have enough for the DDTs. I'm so worried about mathing up these numbers that I mess up the DDTs. But I think at this point, like it'd be cool to get the final harmonic. I really like this tower. I think it's super cool. Like this one's my favorite cause it looks just, you know, totally awesome. But this one just, you know, it seems like a little creature on a Disney movie that seems all cute and cuddly and it goes ah, and it just like eats everybody. So what can we do with no ability for DDTs? I fully planned on pulling the DDTs. I mean, there's so many things, you know, like we could, oh, we don't even have camo. He could probably just, oh my goodness. He probably just do it himself. What a dummy. I wasn't even paying attention. Can I just use my ability? Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was a little rugged, but it works. So I'm actually soloing four ZOMGs without abilities. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got all the, what, oh my goodness. Slow motion replay on that one. That was wild. Okay. Where's those DDTs? Let's get them out of here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. This is. 50 grand. I'm having a blast right now putting this thing on the ground. So there is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, zero chance that I can do this naturally like this. We saw how bad it was a second ago. I'm just wondering, like, what is the extent of what I don't have to do? Can I just put a glue gunner and call it a day? Like, that would be pretty awesome. Like, just even a low, low end glue gunner, too, to leave me some options for the end here. I don't think so, but I mean, I'll take it if it works that way. Okay, so far so good, I guess. Nope, terrible actually. Let's try that one more time, but this time I'm gonna leave them on first. Remember, there's like so many other things we could do. We could get a fifth tier, like the super glue will work for sure. I just, I'm just trying to save some money here. I'm trying to build a strategy in front of your eyes kind of thing, and this is what I would do normally. All right, so put them on first, it should be better. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull just because I can. It'll like let, relieve some of the stress here. Okay, use ability there. Ability there, ability there, okay. Okay, no, ah, almost had it. I should have tried this like a long time ago. I should have just put it down there. But what I'm thinking is there's a, no chance that it's actually gonna just work on its own. So we'll still have to get Relentless Glue, but we saved on a fifth tier, right? We still have $43,000 if we need it for, well, we're gonna need it for the end. I don't think this can take down the bad. We couldn't take it down on Monkey Meadow, so there's zero chance we'll take it here. Now this, I don't know how good this is. I, just, I need to stop putting it on strong and just do first. Okay, let's do this. Pull, 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 first ability. I don't like having to use so many abilities either. I feel like a, a noob, but oh my gosh, are we good? Are we good, bro? We're completely on our own. Just, you know, cross your fingers, hope for the best. Dude, those little abyss things just attack or they don't attack. It's kind of RNG and it's stressing me out. I feel like we should just get something that we know will work and call it a day. Still have to use abilities with super glue? You're absolutely kidding me. Like not that mint. Oh well, no, yeah, all of them, all of them. That is unacceptable. No, no, no. I did not just spend that much money to get dunked. I really don't like spending all of this money. I wish I could have figured something else out better, but the glue gunner is so good for this kind of thing because it'll make sure nothing like, you know, sneaks past us. And it takes DDTs down pretty quickly. So yeah, there's there's zero flaws there. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I guess things happen that way. If you know who sings that, let me know below. But the way this thing hook shots, it's kind of like it's a boomerang or something. It just flies around the whole screen, just doing massive damage. Dude, look at my team here. They're all, they're all just helping each other out. So, okay, I'm gonna pull these two, which I don't know if it's a good idea because now I don't have it for the next one, but it just pulled 97. It made 97 literally no problem. That is pretty cool. And I think we're good. Oh yeah, we're fine. I just pulled a bunch of them. We have the glue gunners here, the glue team. I could actually get this one if I wanted to, but then I think I'm completely dead in the water when it comes to the bad. So 99, I'll just pull, no big deal. Get out of here. I have DDT pullers. Oof. Come on, big head, put your head away. It's not that big. All right, so we'll pull it again. Ability and ability. What are we doing here? You're a goofball. Can okay, I throw one of these in too? and leave it like that. I think that should be enough, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't wanna go all the full super brittle, but I do wanna pull all six of these. So we'll pull all six and then we should be able to just attack the last ones, hopefully. So that's three of them left. Use our ability there. Okay, clean. But now how do we take down a hundred? Let's see how it goes naturally. I think my mistake was using this guy. I, if I was doing it again, not use him. He's great, he's amazing. But for this particular strategy, I should have just gone with super glue and then maybe like a bomb or something. Maybe a top path sniper would have been, like a crippled mob would be perfect for this because it makes it weaker so we can attack. Okay, not even close, not even close. That's kind of a bummer, even with the brittles. And then I believe I can alk buff it too, and that'll make it a little better, right? So like this, 
Watch how much damage this thing will do. It'll be pretty awesome, actually. So we we'll go. Oh, I think I missed the. Dude, I missed the alchemist. But it should be enough. And if it's not even close, then that's not going to be the answer either. Uh, we might break it open, but I can't pull everything down in one go because the ZOMGs pop out. So, no. Oh, yeah. See, even if I pull them, we'd still have to fight that ZOMG. I'm trying to keep it cheap so you guys have some room to spare here. So, let's just try an overclock. That actually might be pretty awesome. And then we still got 21,000. You can do whatever you want with it. My spike was better. My spike was better. Oh my goodness. Okay, we got 21,000 left. I'm gonna do it this way instead because then I can guarantee that I get stronger stuff here. It should do a lot more damage. Berserker Brew on it. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a significant chunk there. That's a lot better to be completely honest with you. So that should be enough to get it broken open earlier. We'll use her ability as well. Yeah, dude, we're definitely gonna open it. It's just a matter of taking everything down under. So what I'll do his ability, pull all those, and then we have one ZOMG to fight. Probably should have waited on that ability, but I don't think it's going to matter regardless. Um, yeah, it's going to pull through unless we could spike storm it, but that's not going to work. We'd have to pull. Maybe, maybe. Can we do that? No, sorry, but sorry, guys. Can't say we didn't try. Let's just do it this old fashioned way. This thing will have like 45,000 damage on it. Just take it out. <laughs> It'll probably pop like right there, to be completely honest. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then you just win the game. Okay. So we have $4,000 left. We need to work on that. I think I would have not used the top path glue gunner, but we get to use a boat on land. So imagine on something like moon landing where there's no water, but the map's really, really long because it spins around. And now you can just use this tower and just finish it off pretty quickly. Or if you want to take it even further, I think it should allow this, right? Yeah. If I can get them all in there. Now we have a nave arc of the sea on a map that has no water. This is awesome. There's so much you can do with this. That is such a cool feature because before all you had is the puddle thingy. Puddle thingy means raft boat is what I was going for. But this is awesome too. You can get all the way up to this one. And now guess what? Your sniper can see, right? No. Oh, you messed with me. I thought I could put this up there. Is it because it's not technically on the track? So you still have to go like this. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So we'll put it all the way up there. And now it's technically on the track. Oh, but it's still blocked. So in game land, it's technically not above the corn. Is that just map specific? Cause nothing ever intended to be above the corn. So if this was like a normal map, it'd be fine. Cause that is super weird. Cause getting the same as it is there as it is here, weird. And if you have not yet, check out this video. We take on some of the hardest ceramic challenges in Bloom City 6. The ceramics have over 2000% health and are nearly impossible to take down. Can we do it?